Well, welcome, everyone. Glad you're here. It is time for morning prayer. It is Monday, the first week in Lent, and we are honored to have you with us in the midst of all of the lovely cray cray we have going on. We are remembering probably one of the finest um, of the Anglican minds of the sort of late Tudor, early Stewartish kind of would you say that's about the window there, Laura? So the beginning of he, the end of the 16th, yeah. beginning of the 17th century kind of thing. Yeah, he he was uh, uh, James the first uh, was a patron of his, and then he went and died, and uh, he left politics to go become the priest that he always wanted to be. There you go. So George Herbert was uh, pretty remarkable. He, he is a related sort of cousin to the Pembrokes, the Earl of Pembroke, who was a very significant figure uh, in, through the Elizabethan into the Jamesian era. And, uh, and his, uh, his experience of being that sort of uh, child of the upper middle class, not that there was such a thing in England at the time uh, as a parent. He was uh, one of 10, I believe, um, his brothers all had distinguished careers of one level or another, some in government, some in the church. Um, he started off in government, as Laura said, and uh, then found his path, if you will, um, after his time in Cambridge uh, to the ordination process, as it was in those days. An interesting thing about him, he didn't last long in ministry, only about three years. And so we're not really remembering someone with somebody with a distinguished career, if you will. However, he is intensely memorable for his writings. Uh, he has one prose work, uh, country, the country priest, the country parson. The other one is uh, the temple, which is a collection of poems. Probably some of the best of the metaphysical poetry of the uh, of the uh, Elizabethan and Jamesian age, and his poetry really has was one of those that sort of codified the spiritual voice of Anglicanism. So uh, anything you want to add to that, Laura, before I conclude with a, with a bit of his poem, Lent? Um, just two bits. One about his time as a country vicar. Um, he was the pastoral priest that we, we think of today, caring for the poor, bringing, uh, bringing communion out to those who are ill. Um, which I think was way ahead of his time. Yep. And his poetry, he used, uh, I, I don't have the language for it, but his poems were also visual. The, uh, the, eagles, wing, the eagles' wings, the angels' wings. Angels' wings. How, how um, it was written in such a way that it produced an image, a literal image to go with the, the words um, the image of the words. Yeah. So, so if you read Angel's Wings, you actually can, they've, the, the way it's supposed to be published is on two facing pages. And when you turn the poem, um, it looks like spread Angel's Wings. The other one that I love is the altar, which is actually built. Yes. The poem is actually built as one would build an altar. But because we are apropos of the moment, I'm going to throw out um, the, the poem, a couple of stanzas of the poem Lent. Um, which probably kind of catches, I think, both his soul and the heart of the season. This is the concluding stanzas of Lent. Who goeth in the way with which Christ hath gone is much more sure to meet him than one that traveleth the byways. Perhaps my God, though he be far before, may turn and take me by the hand and more may strengthen my decays. Yet, Lord, instruct us to improve our fast by starving sin and taking such repast as may our faults control, that every man may revel at his door, not in his parlor, banqueting the poor, and among those his soul. So truly one of the great deep uh, hearts and minds of the Reformation era, and uh, we remember him fondly. And uh, I highly recommend if you are looking for uh, a uh, Lenten interlude to pick up his collected poems. They're truly great. Um, another who was probably uh, akin to his godfather was John Donne, who uh, pre he predated him. Um, and I think, you know, what John created, uh, George perfected 
Uh, so really mm -hmm. truly a great gift today. All right, it's time for morning prayer. Please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We are glad you are with us. And uh, if you like and subscribe, you will uh, get notices of when we are online. If you are on Facebook and following us, we appreciate your presence. And if you are live, give us your intercessions and thoughts and thanksgivings. We'll lift those up at the end of the office. If you are watching after the fact, please know that we do monitor the remarks and chats, and we'll make sure that if you have any concerns, we lift those up as well. All right, here we go. It's time for morning prayer. Remember, we're in right one, folks. I hope you had enough coffee this morning. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord, our maker. He is the Lord, our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. And as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. Psalms 41 and 52, I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Happy are those who consider the poor. The Lord delivers them in the day of trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. You do not give them up to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed. In their illness, you heal all their infirmities. As for me, I said, O oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies wonder in malice when I will die and my name perish. And when they come to see me, they utter empty words. While their hearts gather mischief, when they go out, they tell it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They, they think, think that a deadly thing has fastened on me, that I will not raise, rise again from where I lie. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted the heel against me. But you, O oh Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up, that I may repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me 
because my enemy has not triumphed over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly all day long? You are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, you worker of treachery. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You, you love all words that devour, O oh deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. The Lord will snatch and tear you from your tent. The Lord will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear and will laugh at the evildoer, saying, See the one who would not take refuge in God, but trusted in abundant riches and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name, for it is good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep God's commandments, God's ordinances, and statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you've eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. God made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is God who gives you power to get wealth, so that God may confirm the covenant that God swore to your ancestors as God is doing today. If you do forget the Lord your God and follow other gods to serve and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord is destroying before you, so shall you perish, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this morning, the first song of Isaiah together. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am and the children whom God has given me. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, 
so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, the Song of the Redeemed, together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And, and guide God, us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the, Nor the home of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully increase in us your gifts of holy discipline in almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, that our lives may be directed to the fulfilling of your most gracious will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the prayer attributed to St. Francis. Together we pray, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, 
to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Prayers especially for Tucker and for restoration to health for him. Amen. Amen. A prayer that is both widespread and focused for all those who are struggling with brain trauma, and particularly for those whose families are watching over loved ones, waiting for a response that is indicative of healing and return to cognitive engagement. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Capel, the Anglican Church of Canada. And in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Reverends Early Roland Clemens, Alice Downs, and Phil Stoll. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We appreciate your presence. And again, a reminder, if you're feeling a bit peckish for poetry, I urge you to go online and check out George Herbert's Collected Works. You won't be disappointed at all. I promise. Another great poem, which I will refer to and send you off to, to quest and find, is The Quiddity, which is another one of my favorite English words. So you can look that one up. The Quiddity. Now, we spell it with a Y at the end. He spelled it with an IE. You make your own choices. Folks, like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Join us this evening at 5 p.m. for evening prayer. We appreciate your presence. And in all things, know that it's been an honor to welcome you home to St. Peter's. For now, dear ones, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.